let's get it. Ah, as one crookshank, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker checking in for a daily Move Swiftly thought, giving you a perspective on teamwork that you will not get anywhere else. Here again, Thursday, August 29th, 2024, counting down this whole week. If you're new to the channel, just know this entire week, I've been having a lot of good council football, heavy material, seeing that the alma mater will be playing to, from this recording. They'll be playing my alma mater, Good Council, the Good Council Falcons, Our Lady of Good Council Falcons, the football program that's grown to become nationally known. We'll be playing out here in South Florida where I currently reside, playing in Miami. So all week I've been just <laughs> reminiscing, going back to the good old days when I was playing high school football. And that's really all I like. I, I posted this earlier this week, you know, it's really all I had. My entire identity was wrapped up in this program and wrapped up in the success or the failures of this program. And one of the things, one of my favorite memories, and again, I have a ton. I mean, I'm condensing four years of memories, trying to condense that into, you know, just five days or one week of one week of material, which is actually impossible. So as much as I miss, as, if you've been listening to me all week, as much as I, as much material as I much as much as I say about good council football, believe it or not, it's really just a small fraction of what <laughs> of what uh, I can talk about if I was to really streamline and do like a whole series, whole podcast series of everything I learned from being a part of that program, being dedicated to that program. But one of my one of my favorite this is probably this the what I'm gonna talk to but what I'm gonna talk to you guys today about is gonna be like second, high second in terms of my favorite memories and you know situations, just moments that I didn't realize was such a big deal when I was a kid, I was a teenager, but as I've grown to become an adult, I realized how much these little moments actually affect the way you think as an adult and what you go after, what you believe is possible and all that. Like this right here, what I'm getting ready to tell you is it ranks second. Tomorrow I'll talk to you about number one. But this one, this this memory really, really, really touches my heart because it was the first and the only time, well, first time playing Damatha and the only time I actually beat them, all right? I played them three times in my JV year, my sophomore year, uh, junior year, my senior year, we lost to them, lost to them in the, in the regular season, we lost to them in the championship. But my sophomore year was the only time, first, like I said, first time playing them and beating them. So it was the first time and the only, what ended up being the only time in which we actually won, at least my class, at least my personal matchups against the math. And, you know, the good counsel, the math rivalry is what, what made both programs really grow to become the nationally known programs that they are, whether it's them, whether it's St. John's, whether it's Gonzaga, that rivalry, the, the amount of intensity <laughs> that that rivalry, now obviously I'm a little bit biased, but I will, I will stand on it as, I will stand on it to be true, but it's the greatest rivalry in high school football, period. The Good Council Val Falcons taking on the, the Matha Stacks is the greatest rivalry of all of high school football. And again, I'm sure there'll be some pushback and it'll be biased, it's gonna be based on where you play, but I firmly believe it given you know, the area we play, given that, you know, our state is normally known as a basketball state, all right? So when it comes to the first time playing them and beating them by JV year, it wasn't actually the win that was really rewarding. Now, granted, it was a great day because we beat them 22 to nothing. And me being the defensive guy, me playing linebacker, the, the defensive guy that I was to pitch a shutout against that team the first time playing them. Man, <laughs> you couldn't tell me shit. I was a captain on that team. I was finally really finding a place to fit in with the school. So, you know, shutting them out, shutting them out, that team shutting them out and having the game I had that game, it was amazing. It was a very, very rewarding game, rewarding day. And I mean, just loved it. And then a couple days later, because we were JV, so we played Wednesday. And then a couple days later on the Friday night, good council beat the math at the varsity level. So we beat them at the varsity level for the first time ever. That was the first time they ever won at the varsity level. So that was rewarding, right? But I'm going to take you back before the game, actually a couple weeks before that game actually ensued. And for years, I mean, this isn't new, but the Good Council Falcons have primarily been known for having some great, absolutely incredible running backs. You know, Coach Malloy is an old school coach about, you know, running the football, 
being able to run the ball and you know just control the game based on how they rush it and things like that really believed in o-line blocking taking their steps getting on the double team going to the second level creating the holes he's real old school when it comes to you know running backs and making sure he has the best backs in the country right so there was a you know throughout that entire Throughout the entire year, there was a running back competition or even coming up just throughout the program, we all knew that the running backs were going to be whoever was going to be the tailback at the council was going to be a big deal because there was a lot of value placed on it. Right. So there was a running back competition uh, my JV year between a guy named Chris Daly and Darnell Kemper. Right. So those two were the running backs. Now, again, you know, this is running backs. Having two running backs isn't a bad thing. You're going to need two running backs in this day and age. That's kind of when it started. You needed to have two. But there was there was a battle between them two about who was going to get who was the starter, who was going to get the bulk of the carries, who was better than who. In fact, I remember there was a full, but because what happened was Darnell got hurt. All right. So Darnell was a kind of a quick shifty back. And to be honest with you, before the injury, there was a uh, there was somewhat of Chris Daly was the better back, but there was a real competition when it comes to who was the starter because Darnell was really shifty. You could put him in the slot. He could do a lot of little things with him in terms of just being a dynamic player. He could play corner. There was a lot of little things he was able to do just to help the team in general. So, you know, there was, uh, but he got hurt. Like I said, he got hurt. He never really recovered after he fractured his ankle. He fractured a, a bone in his ankle or something like that, right? So anyway, there was a huge argument between the two of them after I believe it was when we played McNamara. Yeah, we played McNamara. And there was a huge, ar huge argument because Chris Daly had a great game. And, you know, Darnell was, he was, he was a jealous type. You know, he was always the one that was kind of envious towards Chris's success and all that because it, he was a talker. You know, he talked a lot of shit. And when it finally came out, look, Chris is the better brother back. You know, he had to, he had to do what he normally does and talks his shit and all that. So they're going back and forth, going back and forth. And by the time it, by the time we played the math, I believe, it was week seven Darnell's uh Darnell's ankle started to heal up and you know we were strategically keeping him out of certain games because we wanted him to be ready for that Damatha game right so both of them again both of them beefing all year I mean just you know looking at each other cross sideways really not liking each other really don't like each other throughout the entire year and as they were going back to because so they put them to to return the kickoff, uh, to return the kickoff. It was them two returning kicks or whatever. And as they were going back, and this I'm talking about when the game started, like immediately after we did our Hail Mary full of grace and it was time to kick the ball off, I see the two of them go back to return the kicks and Chris goes to Donna. He goes, hey man, no more beefing no more. All right, we teammates now, let's go win this shit. <sighs> You guys can see it, but I I'm telling you, if you look closely, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. I'm getting goosebumps because it didn't matter at that fucking point. It did not matter. It did not matter how much they may not like each other or, you know, have whatever they did in the past, whatever the arguments were. It was like, right now, we got a big game. We got to prove ourselves to this program. We are teammates. We're brothers. And we're going to go out and we're going to win this game. <clears throat> and when we did it, when we did it 22 to, like I said, 22 to nothing, those are the moments that carry you forever. I mean, the nowadays, listen, when you, you get a job or you're working in a situation or you're building a family or you're, you may be having back and forth with whoever, understand that these are the things that the game teaches you. These are the game, these are the things that the game allows you to learn about teamwork and about just, you know, developing and growing and building a unit, building a family, building whatever it is you are passionate about building take that lesson in all right when it's time to show up for your teammates when it's time to think about somebody other than yourself when it's time to be selfless look at the person next to you look at the situation and say look regardless of whatever words you may have had in the past no more beefing forget about all that shit and let's go get this win all right I love telling that stuff. I'm not sure if I, I mean, it, it, I think about it all the time because it was such a special moment and those two you know Chris became a co-captain with me as became a co-captain with me our senior year and you know Darnell and I we, we became kind of friends with, well, I'll say we got a little close that year so I knew them both very personally and to see them come together in that moment and get that win again it teaches you everything man and that that's what life is all about that those are the things that you got to pull away from the game all right <sighs> all that being said
main website to check out to dive deeper into all my work. It's makeyamove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. One stop shop for your teamwork and your self development needs. As one crook, thank you, one and only Move Swiftly speaker checking out. You guys continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.